and in the vessel wall, there are two different cells, two major cells in the vessel wall. So, um, so here showing you that uh, in the in whether that's uh, artery, aorta is the largest artery down to the vein, down to the capillary, they all construct by the same material. Three type of vessel, two three type of uh, sorry, two type of cells, uh, endothelium cells and the smooth muscle. Of course, there are some extracellular extracellular matrix that provide the collagen to protect or provide the strength, provide the, the, the strength of the vessel wall. Uh, those are the things. But uh, the major cells in the vessel walls are endothelium cells and the smooth muscle. And from there, we will, so here is the major structure of the vessel vascular walls and the film cells form a single layer inside of the vessel wall. Uh, elastic fibers, you know, building between the endothelium and the smooth muscle. Here we have the smooth muscle. So these are cells. They provide the force to control the diameter of the of the of the uh, of the vessel. And then uh, we also have uh, the uh, collagen, collagen, you know, uh, provide some structure support to the vessel wall. Overall, the two things we, we must must know is that these two cells are quite important, and the thin cells and the smooth muscle. All right, from there, we here is the typical structure of the vessel. Uh, if we are talking about the artery, basically artery has three zones, uh, three region. Uh, it's called tunica intima, that's very inner portion, tunica media. Tunica media is the portion that we see smooth muscle. That's how vascular can change its diameter. If the smooth muscle contracts, vessel becomes small. If it's relaxed, vessel become larger. And by controlling the diameter, we can control how much blood go into our organ. Endothelium is right here, the very inner portion right here in the very, very inner portion. Smooth muscle is in the tunica media. And the outer portion is called tunica externa. Even though the vessel wall is quite thick in a way that artery is quite thick. But the major, major, like a clinical relevant portion is the endothelium. Because endothelium is the place, is the interface of the vessel wall versus the blood. And so everything here in the blood, when they are abnormal, because the blood can be, can vary a lot when we eat. We have high glucose, we have high protein, we have high amino acid. If the person got infection, it may have more inflammatory cells right here. And the inflammatory cells release cytokines that can trigger more inflammation. And all this, their first interaction with the vessel wall is the endothelium cells. So endothelium cells um, has to face all these different stress and all these different challenge. Also that people build hypertension over time. Uh, uh, we gradually have higher hypertension because our vessel will become more stiff and it's not very elastic. And another thing is that uh, when we are, you know, have more stress, those stress will also cause vessel uh, to, those stress will cause the uh, increased heart blood pressure, increased heart blood pressure, those pressure can also cause shear force to the vessel wall. And that shear force will first 
apply those force on the endothelium cells. So this endothelium cell receive chemical stress, physical stress, and uh, and the flow. This flow, if this, this flow is very stiff, it's not very smooth. They will also provide force on the vessel wall, and the, the first thing they hit is the endothelium cells. So the endothelium cell is very sensitive and a very uh, the very usually very first uh, cells to get injured if our vessel is not healthy. <clears throat> so from here, top major like concept is that re region, tunica interna, tunica media, tunica externa. That's the first thing. The second thing is that two cells. Endothelium cells are in the tunica intima. Smooth muscle are in the tunica media. That's the second thing. The third thing is that injury usually stopped by endothelium cells. So on the other hand, if we ask that tunica externa, tunica media, tunica intima, which zone or which segment is the most vulnerable or most commonly site to see the damage, it will be tunica intima. That the very inner portion is so usually not the outer portion. Outer portion is your usually very stable. Smooth muscle can have injury, but they are usually very durable because they don't really directly face all these different stress. So that's the three zone. And uh, here to compare uh, vein and uh, artery, they have a several similarity. Basically, they all have all these three zones, uh, tunica intima, right here, tunica intima is the endothelium cells, tunica media are the smooth muscle cells layer, tunica externa. So artery and veins all have these three, uh, three, um, three zones. Uh, the only difference between, one of the major difference between these two is that vein has the valve. Okay, so that's the major thing. If we have the list of all these, arter these vessels, artery, vein, capillary, which one has valve? That is vein. Vein has the valve. Uh, so when, when blood flows through it, the valve can prevent it from backflow. So that's the artery and the vein. And then here, this one, if you haven't downloaded the new slides, uh, I first remove this one here. Uh, in, the begin in, in another version, this one is very back. But I think we, I should talk, talk about it right here. It's a good transition from artery vein to the capillary. These are the three major, major vessels. Do you, do you need time to download the new PowerPoint slide or I can just continue? You can continue. Okay, okay. good. Okay, I, I will just continue. So here the capillary, so we have the artery vein. Artery vein has every component in the vessel, smooth muscle, endothelium, three uh, zones, intima, media, external. So they have everything. Capillary is different. Capillary only has one single layer of endothelium cells. So capillary doesn't have smooth muscle. Very thin, only single layer. So this is a typical capillary. You can see that here is one endothelium cells. They, they a cell and they're very like a spread out to form this part of this wall they connect with another endothelium cells, another endothelium cell. And uh, the outer portion, we have this uh, basement membrane, uh, basically just keep everything together. So this capillary is a region throughout the entire circulation. Capillary is a region that we will see substance exchange between blood and the tissue. So if we go back to this slide here, blood coming from our heart. Heart basically is a, is a pump. It provides a force. But the blood work for one only one 
not just only one, but major function of the blood is like, like a airport shuttle. So they pick up, deliver uh, oxygen. That's their major work. Of course, deliver some other things. But they pick up, deliver, and that pick up and deliver has to be done through capillary because capillary is the only place that substance can exchange between blood and, uh, and the tissue. So here is the capillary. In order to complete that, uh, that transaction, capillary wall has to be very thin. It only has single layer of endothelium cells. Substance exchange from the blood into the tissue through one of these uh, pathway, diffusion. So basically substance can diffuse through the membrane, through these uh, endothelium cells to the outside or outside to diffuse in, so diffusion. Diffusion is driven by the concentration gradient. So high concentration will push the substance to low concentration. When, when, we, when it carry oxygen, it has high concentration. Outside tissue doesn't have the oxygen. So oxygen can diffuse through uh, this. And the oxygen is, is gas. So gas can pat, penetrate through the uh, lipid by layer. So it can diffuse through. Another pathway is the intercellular clinical space. So here is one cell. Here is another cell. Between cells, here is some cliffs. And uh, these cliffs can be tight, can be connected very tightly, or it can, it can be connected very loosely. So uh, substance can diffuse through. And with this one, this one provides a pathway for water soluble substance because uh, water soluble substance, they cannot diffuse across cell uh, because cell membrane are lipid. They have to diffuse through non-lipid and that intercellular space provide that. Uh, so such as some water soluble substance such as glucose, glucose is so important, all cells need glucose to produce the ATP. So glucose, we eat it, we digest it, we transport those to the organ system. And the trans transportation is done by the mm, blood vessel. And in order to diffuse from the vessel into the organ, they diffuse through this, uh, uh, this intercellular cliffs. Another one is called fenestration. We will learn about that and uh, transcytosis. We will learn about it. So basically there are three mechanisms. Uh, the first one is the diffusion. Uh, an example is the oxygen and CO2 too. Uh, so those are gases. And the gas can penetrate through this uh, phospholipid. They are Several things can penetrate through phospholipid gases, steroid hormone, uh, vitamin ADKE, and the water. So all this can go through this pathway. Even though if the cells are very tightly connected, substance can still diffuse through. And the next one is the interstellar cliff is right here. So uh, this one provide water soluble substance to diffuse through, uh, such as the ion, water can diffuse through too, uh, glucose, all this can diffuse through this intercellular because these are all water soluble substance. Uh, what this intercellular cliffs uh, can be varied in different capillary. So in some capillary, they have very tight junction. So cell-cell connection are very tightly. So we think about this, uh, this vessel like endothelium cells, they are separate, separated uh, cells. So uh, they have no reason just randomly to form very beautiful vessel wall because each one is individual cells. In order to put them together to form a beautiful vessel wall, 
they have to find a way to grow together to cells together. And that grew to grow two cells together in a juncture of two cells is called tight junction. These are proteins to bind two cells together and the bind cell two together so they can form a vessel wall. And then this tight junction can be varied. In some capillary, they have very tight, tight junction. So they form very tight vessel wall. And uh, with that one, substance cannot easily diff diffuse through the interstellular cliffs. And then one example is in the brain. That junction is so tight that, uh, for example, uh, immune cells, uh, B cell or T cell, monocyte, uh, if it's in the common other organ, they will penetrate through it into the organ in order to conduct some uh, clearance. But in the brain, they cannot go through because the brain has very tight, tight junction. Uh, but some other organ in the majority of the organs or in the ma major uh, other most of the organs, they have very loose and tight junction. So uh, even though they have some control, but in order to, they can keep cells connected together, but that junction is very loose. So sometimes it's open a little bit, only tight one end, tight two end, but uh, very loosely. So with that one, substance can diffuse through very easy. Any questions so far? So that's two, these two are very easy to understand. Diffusion through the membrane and the uh, interstellar cliffs that's through the interstellar space. So these two are very, that's great that these, these, two, these two are very easy to understand. Let's talk about these two. This one, fenestration. What's fenestration? Fenestration meaning windows. So uh, before we move that, that's uh, uh, in the brain here, in the outer organ, it has it has a fenestration, but it also has loose interstellar space. In the brain, everything tightly connect together. So uh, substance cannot diffuse through. In the brain, we also have exercise that controls it. This one is called blood brain barrier. So this term is also very important. So even, even though we didn't really, really spend time on talking about blood brain barrier, but that term is super, super important because nervous system, neuronal disease are getting a lot more attention these days. So blood brain barrier is a very unique feature of the brain that there is two world. Blood is one world. The cells in the brain is another world. And these two are separated by this, this like a tight junction and controlled by the astro astrocyte, parasite, uh, to prevent anything from the blood into the, into the brain. So uh, brain is also a region called immune privilege area. That means that in the brain, there's no B cell, there's no T cell, there's no monocytes. Those immune cells, those white blood cells are not allowed to go into the brain. They are blocked away. Immune system don't know anything about the brain. It's like uh, another, another territory that they, they don't enter. If we do these things, go enter into the brain of those immune cells, that will start to, you know, cause uh, the development of brain disease. One example is the uh, autoimmune disease, uh, such as the uh, multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is our immune system start to see the oligodendrocyte. That's a thing they never seen before because brain is separate, sorry, brain is separated from the blood. So those immune cells, they never seen oligodendrocyte. When they see it, they thought that's a foreigner and they start to attack on it. For some people, not, not, not everybody. 
uh, and uh, and that will cause um, disease, autoimmune disease. So this term, um, yes. Um, so the astrocytes, what exactly do they prevent from getting into the blood? Astrocytes, so remember, as you're asking about the astrocyte, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, so in the, in the brain, the nervous system, we have two groups of cells. One is called neuronal cells. Neuronal cells are excitable cells, meaning that they can generate action potential. They communicate from one cell to the other through the neurotransmitter. So that's neuronal cells. Another group of cells called glia cells. Glia, glia cells have three types of cells. Uh, astrocyte, that's one of it. So this astrocyte. Okay. And uh, <coughs> myelin cells and uh, microglia cells. Then okay. this astrocyte, this astrocyte here, we only see one, one like uh, 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 extension or process of it. But this astrocyte is like a, like a star. They send out a lot of like uh, hands or branches to control so many other things. One of that branch touch with the blood vessel. So if this blood vessel, they touch it and then they can release, they can detect that if it's getting loosened, they will come over here to extend that bondage to prevent any leakage of this blood vessel. Oh, so it's to prevent the blood from getting out. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Any other question? So astrocytes, one of the glia cells, one of the brain cells. They are brain cells, but one of their function is to regulate this capillary to prevent, basically to prevent anything, prevent blood to leak out. And you can imagine that for some disease, uh, for example, a very common one is the hemorrhage, a hemorrhagic uh, stroke, that leakage in the brain. And that will cause a lot of issue because now it's not just the leak, it basically is broken and the blood going out. And so all these things coming out to the territory that they never seen before. And, uh, and the immune system coming in, uh, come over here, B cell, T cells, monocytes come here. They try to help, but they are enter into the territory that they never seen before. And uh, uh, so stroke has two types. One is ischemic stroke. That means no blood going to the brain. The other one is the hemorrhagic stroke. That means blood leaking into the brain. And uh, the ischemic stroke, although it's a common one, is relatively, easy to manage. Hemorrhagic stroke, even though it's less common, but usually the fatality is very high because it's very, not, it's very difficult to manage a hemorrhagic stroke. What was the ischemic, ischemic stroke again? Rex, you're back. I was, I was <laughs> just thinking about, I mean, you got your email and I'm glad that you, I see you enter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what was the ischemic stroke? Ischemic stroke, ischemic stroke is that, uh, so stroke means that um, it's a vessel damage in the brain. Ischemic stroke means that there is lack, lack of blood supply into the brain. So that's if, if the blood need the, this levels of the, if the brain need this level of the blood to provide oxygen, to provide glucose, but if the level to provide the brain is lower, reduced. It's usually due to the thrombosis that block the blood vessel. So the blood cannot go further and the downstream of that vessel will receive the starvation and the dehydration. Altogether, they don't receive, not just dehydration, but they don't receive the blood. They don't receive the fresh oxygenized blood into the brain. And then these cells will develop the ischemic stroke. And, uh, and that is a common one. On the other, in the other extreme of the stroke is the hemorrhagic stroke. That means that it's not, they don't have the blood, but it's the vessel that's broken and the blood leaked out. And uh, 
So that's two types of the stroke. The most, the common one, 80% of the stroke is the ischemic stroke. Uh, the thrombosis can be developed throughout the body and the flow to the brain, stuck there, and, uh, and then it causes ischemia. Only about 15%, 20% of the ischemia of the stroke is the hemorrhagic stroke. That's the basal wall, uh, like this basal wall is this, not this one, because usually the, the, the basal wall got injured. It's not the cap capillary, but the artery, uh, because artery usually contains high pressure. Capillary has very low pressure. Uh, vein has very low pressure, but the artery has high pressure. And when the artery uh, is, is not healthy, uh, usually they will start to develop, it's called aneurysm. So the, the vessel was supposed to be very, very uh, surrounded, but it will build something ex uh, extend from that vessel wall. And uh, that morph morphological uh, pathology will then cause the vessel wall become injured and one day it broke and it leak. And then that leak can happen anytime. And when it leak, it will cause the hemorrhagic stroke, blood flow out. And uh, even though the chance is very low, but the fatality rate is very high. Wow. Yeah. So, so I, 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 um, there are several stories, something like that, that like people don't know they have the aneurysm, that's the, the uh, vessel wall is, you know, uh, abnormal. They don't know that, but they, you know, go to get the, uh, uh, brain imaging, neural imaging, for some other reason, and they found that somewhere in the brain they have that aneurysm. And uh, if they can know it, and uh, to remove that aneurysm, if it's doable, sometimes in the middle of the brain it's very difficult to do the surgery. But if they can find it, or they can monitor it, you know, because they can see that if that structure is stable, they don't need to do anything. But if it's getting, you know, gradually getting worse and worse, they can start to pay attention on it. And if it's manageable, if, it's, if, if we can conduct surgery on it, they can remove it. And then, so they can prevent the hemorrhage from happening. Wow. Yeah. And that pressure just builds up from, from just, it just happens? It just... So basically, that is is uh, uh is the the basal wall usually contains, for example, the what the basal wall I was talking about is very much like artery basal wall. Right. Yeah, it contains high high pressure. But the annual reason is that this um. Let's see. Drawing. Okay. Any reason is that this basal wall become extruded. And uh, and uh, so uh, you you see usually the blood vessel is like this, but uh, right. any reason is very much like this, and uh, you know, a pop up. And uh, and uh, um, if 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 it's stable, if this structure is stable, then it won't leak. But if because of that, sometimes blood flow through it. You know, because this is high blood flow, it will hit it, it will, for, it will provide a stress, shear force on it, and uh, gradually it will cause damage. And one day, one day if it's injured, it's broken, then blood flow out. So the injury, so injury has to occur for yeah. the kink to happen? Yes. You know, what, what makes it swell up like that, like in... So usually, and, uh, what makes it swell like that? That's a good, good, good question. What makes it swell like that? It's a combination of two. One is the genetic factor that for some people, they just cannot, they just don't have a good proteins to maintain a good, healthy vessel wall. So that's genetic. They have higher chance to develop vulnerable vessel wall. And the second thing is that hypertension because even though you if a person don't have a good like a 
basal wall protein to maintain the structure. If the, if the blood pressure is not that high, it may be still okay for 100 years and without developing anything. But if the person in the early age start to build its blood pressure, then this vessel was supposed to handle only uh, say 120 to 80, you know, not the perfect uh, blood pressure. But if the person built uh, 139, you know, it's not the hypertension yet, but higher than this one, then this pressure could become critical for the vessel wall to maintain its structure. And uh, that pressure will gradually push it, push it, and uh, it will make it swollen a little bit. So that's two factors. So it's very much like a genetic. If, if the family has this history, then you need to pay attention to that. Uh, and it's not like nothing you can do. You can, they are, they are, one major thing is uh, that is very important because, you know, um, low glucose fat can, is, is, is better for the vessel wall. Uh, and uh, don't smoke, so something something like that. Any other questions? So that's the uh, so these are the two these two diffusion. Oh, sorry, diffusion and the intercellular cave space are very easy to understand. One this one and these two provide two different, I mean, these two pathways are uh, serve two different uh, molecules. Diffusion serve those are lipid permeable uh, gases, water, vitamin ADKE, steroid hormone. And uh, intercellular cave or space serve those water soluble substance, glucose, ions, and now the next one is called fenestration. So fenestration is, is uh, the uh, windows. So basically these are windows exist in the endothelium cells. So this is the endothelium cells. Ideally we are, you know, uh, a common cell, a common cell, we will have, uh, sorry, a uh, structure like, like a, uh, so this is cell, cell membrane all around, and uh, this is the nucleus, and uh, we have some mitochondria. And uh, for the endothelium cell, this, this structure will become elongated nucleus like that. But for the fenestration, fenestration is that for these cells, they build the the tunnel through. So in the vessel wall, it has the tunnel through, like windows. So you can, even though you know, three dimensionally they are all connected together, but there will be one tunnel to penetrate from one side of the of the uh, of the vessel to the other side of the vessel, so that's the fenestration. Do you get it? Okay, it's like uh, the house has some windows, so it's still the house. In typical cells, there's no windows, but for this endothelium cell, they have the windows, so things can pass through that windows. So that's the endothelium, and the, uh, that's the fenestration. And uh, so this fenestration also serves the water soluble substance. That water soluble substance can penetrate through it to the blood, and the front blood penetrates out. And the fenestration is usually can control the size. So the size can be small or big, it really depends on the organ. So in different or in different organ, the fenestration can be a lot, can be bigger. In some 
organs, the capillary has very little penetration or no penetration. Like in the brain, there's no penetration. So that's penetration. Here is the example that some organs has large lot of penetration provide this uh, pathway for water soluble substance to diffuse through, but some other organ has very tight junction and the no fenestration. So that's the fenestration. The third one here, sorry, sorry, the third, the fourth one here, the uh, transcytosis. Uh, it's conduct through uh, proteins or uh, uh, organelles called Kvoli, uh, Kvoli, uh, sorry, Kvoli. So that's this one here. So basically, this Kvoli mechanism, Kvoli mechanism, is very much like the. Do you guys remember the endocytosis and the exocytosis? Endo, let me write down here. Yeah, it's okay. Good. So it's uh, uh, another concept is the endocytosis versus the exocytosis. So basically, that's uh, how cells engulf some material from extracellular space or release material into the extracellular space. So the caviolite or transcytosis pathway is very much like that. So in a cell wall, it can form the endocytosis and form these vesicles. Then these vesicles will carry those substance throughout the cells and release it to the other end to conduct this exocytosis. So this is, will be some endo and some exo. Or opposite, it may take it here and uh, form these vesicles, vesicles diffuse through the other end and then release it. Uh, so, so with this one, carbioli or trans, so transcytosis, trans, means that it include the endo plus the exo cytosis. So this one, will this one serve the water soluble or the lipid soluble? Molecules. Huh? Will that serve the water soluble or lipid soluble? What well, make this carbioli or transcytosis different from the other, the other three pathway. So we have this this four pathway, right? That would be lipid. Yes, please. What make this uh, transcytosis unique? Why do we need it? If we already have these three. Any idea? Food. Hmm. Like nutrients? Nutrients, okay. But can nutrients transport through the intercellular space? Maybe if something is like potentially toxic to the exterior environment or something. Mm. Okay. Maybe something toxic. So it has to be protected, protectively moved, right? Something that you don't want it to be freely diffused. Basically, this one is freely diffused through the cell. This one is freely diffused through that interstellar space without any control. Fenestration can be freely diffused through that windows. But one thing unique about this transcytosis is that it's highly regulated. Uh, so it's not typically toxic or anything. What makes it unique is that- No worries, it, that was me yesterday, so. Say again. All right. So what makes it unique is that it's um, it's uh it basically that it, it 
it's uh it's more specific. So this one is uh is more this one is more more accurate specific because say you are moving one substance from one end from the vesicles and then to release it to the other end. So that's the transcytosis. That means that you need to first be able to identify this molecule. So the cell has to identify it. And then once it touched, so it, we, we must have a receptor. Receptor. Once it hit that receptor, it trigger an endocytosis from the vesicles and then move it across. So transcytosis is very specific. It has a receptor to receive that molecule. Once only when the specific molecule fit it, then it will trigger an endocytosis. Then it will transport it across. So that's the, any questions so far? So we basically talk about this four mechanism because capillary is the major place to complete the substance exchange from the blood to the tissue and from the tissue to the blood. And, uh, and they have this four mechanism, diffusion, intercellular cleave, fenestration, transcellulosis. Diffusion serve the lipid soluble, the intercellular space, and the fenestration serve the water soluble. Transcellulosis also serve the water soluble, but transcellulosis is very specific because it has a receptor. It receive it only responds to those fit to that receptor. And once it receive it, it will trigger an endocytosis and the exocytosis. This is complete by the carbioli. They don't call it traditional vesicles because the protein is different. It's called carbioli and uh, move it across. So this one is here, and uh, so this one summarized it. Capillary wall, transcellular transportation has four mechanisms. One is diffusion. The other one is the intercellular cliffs or space, carbioli, fenestration. Here's carbioli, and here is fenestration. Any questions? All right, so this one summarizes uh, the different vessel wall, artery, the different, if we want to, so overall, sometimes when we learn so many things, go to, when, before you go to sleep, think about that, these terms, like uh, the new thing you learn, like artery. When we learned about the vessel, we learned basically you break it down, vessel, then three type of vessel, artery, vein. Capillary, and then you think about that. Describe artery. What 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 uh, what's unique about the artery? And then you 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 would first come to your mind that artery is a place that it receive high blood pressure. It experience high blood pressure. And from there you would think that the artery because the blood pressure is so high, the vessel wall has to be very thick in order to maintain the structure. And uh, to maintain a vessel wall to be thick, smooth muscle sometimes is larger to, to maintain it. And uh, how about vein? Vein is low blood pressure, so it doesn't really have very thick vessel wall, but it has everything. Intima uh, and the media and the external tunica, so three zones. And, uh, um, uh, what's unique about the vein is that because the blood flow is so slow and the pressure is so slow, so we may have some stagnant of the blood in the vessel wall, in, in the vessel. And it, to prevent the back flow, the vessel has to build a different structure. It's called valve to prevent the back flow. 
So that's unique about the band. Then capillary. Capillary, the third one, the most important part is that is the place that we have the substance exchange. And in order to, the substance has to move from inside to outside or in, outside to inside, the vessel wall has to be very thin. So it only has one single layer of endothelium cell. And the substance diffused through, through four mechanisms, diffusion, interstellar space, fenestration, and uh, transcytosis. So that's that. Any questions? Otherwise, we move on to this topic, atherosclerosis. No questions? I want to talk about one disease that is so, so, so important. That is called atherosclerosis. Okay, so uh, the atherosclerosis is the build up. If we look at this picture here, is the gradually built up of this plaque in the vessel wall. So sometimes we see it like this one here. If it's like this, it's already very bad, but this is more common that we see this was supposed to be smooth interior, should be smooth vessel structure that blood flows through it. And uh, now it starts to build this fatty stuff underneath it. And this fatty stuff will become bigger and bigger, and it will cause the thrombosis. This thrombosis will become the, uh, like, a, uh, like a bump, and uh, it will pop anytime that it may flow and then it may get stuck somewhere in the brain, it causes ischemia. If it's stuck in the, in, the, uh, in the heart, it will cause heart stroke. So, uh, then one thing you must, must know is that this atherosclerosis, the lesion exists in, uh, Intima tunica. So that's one thing you must know. So first of all, this atherosclerosis exists in the artery. So that's an artery disease. And in the artery, we have three different zones. Uh, tunica intima, tunica media, tunica externa. This lesion developed in the tunica intima. So that's the second thing. Maybe next time we have the quiz on this one. Not quiz, pooling, okay? On this one, that which region we see the development of the atherosclerosis is tunica intima. Please, please remember that. And, uh, and uh, then, so first, it happens in the artery. So artery band capillary, this atherosclerosis in the artery. Before I talk about that detail, I want to tell you why do we really care? Because this is a, the top 10 causes of the death in America. The first one, heart disease. This is the blockage of the, this uh, blood flow into the heart. So this is called the uh, coronary artery disease. So blood will I have no. You raise hand, ready? What's up? Um, yeah, I just I was just curious. Um, why is it that we get atherosclerosis in the high pressure um, arteries instead of the low pressure veins? Okay. That question is because that uh, in this disease, the initial cause of this disease is the damage, as I mentioned before, is the damage to the endothelium cell. So in the vessel wall, we have all these vessel have the endothelium cell. And the endothelium cells can be injured by so many things, but one thing more common to cause the disease is the hypertension the stress, the high blood flow flows through it. 
over and over and over. And uh, give it time, this, this endothelium cell will feel that shear force and uh, gradually become abnormal. They will not act at normal anymore. And then they will become broken. They will not sustain its uh, endothelium connection. And then it will build some leakage, some disconnect of these endothelium cells. And when there's, if it shows some opening in this endothelium layer, the first thing it happens is that in our blood, we have the uh, low density lipoprotein. And the low density lipoprotein will see that leakage and will start to leak through it and start to build that low density lipoprotein underneath it. And, uh, and that's why that uh, we commonly see this disease in the artery, but not in the vein and the capillary. That's because that this is the vessel uh, experience constantly high blood pressure. It's not just high blood pressure. It's, it's a variation of that blood pressure. It has a systolic and a diastolic. It's a change. So that gives it more stress than the endothelium in other vessels. Is that good? All right. That's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so what do we need to talk about it? That is because that is a major cause of disease uh, in the heart, cancer, uh, lower respiratory disease that is more like the lung disease and then stroke. So stroke is the atherosclerosis in the brain and uh, that basically causes ischemia. So that's why this is so important. And the to, to understand this, so as I mentioned, uh, several things we must must know that when, we, when people mention about this atherosclerosis, the first thing you need to know is that it's happened in the artery. The second thing is that is the damage uh, appear as the low density lipoprotein or fatty acid, or no, not fatty acid, fat accumulate in the location is the tunica intima, so the very inner portion. And, uh, and uh, if we, so that's the major thing you need to know that the region of damage and the vessel all to, to, to have this damage. Um, and the, 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 uh, the sequence of that development start by the endothelium cell lesion, endothelium cell injured, then we have the low density lipoprotein to go in there, lipid co go in there, start to accumulate. When they start to accumulate, our immune system, our macrophage will try to come here to engulf it and take it away, try to clear it. But this LDL, low density lipoprotein, has high components of cholesterol. And cholesterol is not very easy for cell to digest. Cell can digest fatty acid, cell can, can convert fatty acid to triglyceride and store it as very usable fuel for the future use. But cholesterol is not. Cholesterol in our body only can, is very important, but not, we don't use cholesterol as our fuel. So when cell digest cholesterol, they don't really know how to deal with it. They can move it back to liver and use it to produce the bile, uh, the, to produce the bile uh, stuff. But, um, but, but you know, it's, it's not very straightforward for cells to directly use it. So when they digest it, they will kind of like uh, don't know what to do. Then this monocyte will stay here and make it make it even worse because they don't leave. This monocyte will stay. This macrophage will stay here, and uh, they will eat a lot of cholesterol and they cannot move, so they stay here. 
and then they they will start to accumulate more and more when they it may build this uh, thrombosis. So uh, so here is the sequence. First is endothelium cell damage, and what caused the damage? Hypertension, uh, hyperglycemia, uh, high salt food, food uh, and the summary thing. And then low density protein penetrate to the tunica intima. So you can probably highlight this word too. So it will be the region is in the tunica intima. And uh, we should already know that LDL, low density protein, has high uh, cholesterol. Then monocytes or macrophage engulf it, and they cannot live. They become paralyzed. They stay. They become a cell with full of this lipid, full of this cholesterol. And then we call it form cells. And then it may, this tissue structure may become not stable, have some leakage, and the platelet, as we mentioned before, see that leakage when, there's, when there is damage, platelet see the collagen, and when platelet see the collagen, platelet will be activated, platelet will start to aggregate together, and uh, it will trigger the coagulation pathway. Do you guys remember what I'm talking about? Yes, I see the heads nothing in my yes, head. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, 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 thank you. So the platelet uh, 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 coagulate, coagulation back, uh, pathway will be activated and they will form this uh, uh, clock. And, uh, and uh, if this clock will become unstable, they will move away they will form this thrombosis. So it will be, uh, if it got stuck in the brain, it's caused stroke. If in the coronary, in the heart, it will cause heart disease. And that's a major cause of the disease. This development, this one is quite scary that even though that people have the heart disease later age, 60, 70 years old, but for this thrombosis to be developed, it may start very young, like 20 years old. It may start to have this lesion. This development takes a long time. So uh, don't think that you guys are young, you know, you can do whatever, or your kids are young, can do whatever. Early, you know, know this physiology provide you some knowledge, knowledge is power, to provide you some knowledge that you need to take care of your body better, you know, 